Okay, so this is part three of my AMC20 rebuild, and today I'm going to be upgrading my AMC20 original uh, open differential with this Eaton Detroit True Track. This is specific to the AMC20 axle. Um, number one, it supports the 8.875 ring gear. So we'll get into that more, as well as the other upgrade is going to be, we're going to be upgrading gears from 354 to 373. So after looking through all this, there's nothing in this old setup at this point that I need. Um, so we're going to push this to the side, and then we're um, specifically we'll be covering everything that it takes to assemble these pieces, as well as get them installed and set up in the housing properly. Uh, now this is not a how-to video. This this is the first time I've ever done this. This is more can I follow the instructions and do it based on some of the best instructions that they give, right? So I've downloaded a bunch of reference documentation. Uh, here's, here's everything about uh, the ring gear itself. It's got a lot of specs and, and procedures that we follow. Here's the Eaton True Track directions. So this is you know how you're supposed to install that, those directions, as well as I downloaded an exploded view diagram and all the parts if there was something in here that I needed. Here's a list of all the parts. I think I got this from Quadratech. Um, Jeep CJ Series AMC 20 rear axle parts, 76 through 86. Mine's a 1979. So um, just in case I wanted to see something about uh, all the pieces, that's that's where I got that. So this will go in all my documentation that I keep for this project. And uh, if you would like to see this whole series from the beginning, I've got a playlist. I'll put a card in the upper right-hand corner, and uh, you can bounce back to, to, to see part one and, and basically looking at the playlist it'll play them in order okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this ring gear on the, the um, differential itself and uh, they've had, basically I've taken this bolt and I've chased these threads it goes in real smoothly I've actually checked this for flatness but they want you to run a file over it so um, just to make sure there's no birds but you can feel it feels it feels fun that's not picking up anything, so. Okay, so. Okay, so I got this chalked up in wood just so I don't damage these gears. I don't do anything to that. And then I've also got to make sure that, that the, what I'm actually pushing on is centered underneath this. Because I this thing pushing down in the center, it's got a chance to walk in. And we're going to try and monitor that as well. But um, I've cleaned both both surfaces are clean. Use these to basically utilize dowel pins to kind of line up, make sure the hole's lined up. And I think we're trying to be ready to press. Okay. I will check. That looks like a little gap there. I'm going to check out to some feeler gauges and see if there's any, if everything's centered around there before we get it all tightened up.
crisscross. So the instructions for the ring and pinion gear don't mention pressing these on. It's, it's time to do it. The only reason they don't do that is because they're assuming you're putting on an existing carrier that already has bearings and you're replacing that. They're just worried about the ring and pinion. So since I got this all this out and it's, it's basically set up, we're going to get that pushed on. So I did check. This is a Timken bearing. It's the exact same part number as what came off uh, the original configuration. So we're going to put this on there. It's going to go like this because the the outer race needs to be able to put on, be put on last, um, and it's got this little rounded edge here that'll match up with the machining there. So um, we're just going to put that on there like that, and then I've got a ball joint kit that I found this little fixture piece, and it fits perfectly in there. It's touching against the inside race of this bearing. In fact, so you can spin this. So I'm going to be pushing on the inside to get this down, and not pushing on this cage. That'll be key. And then if I put this guy right here on, we'll be ready to press. So there, what happened is this sat down and bottomed out on that. So we got to do something a little different. Okay, yeah, so this, this little ledge here will go down inside there and we'll be pressing on this piece here so that'll work. Flip this over. Get this in here. So after inspecting this, uh, looking at it uh, straight on, it still is not down far enough. And so I think what happened is that other collar was actually still interfering with that centerpiece. So in that same kit is this little cap and cup and it fits perfectly. It'll fit and won't interfere that. And the inside diameter is bigger than that centerpiece. So we're going to stick that right there. And go down some more. Yeah, they see it going down more. Take a peek at that. 
Yeah, okay, that's flush. Same thing, bearing's gonna go tapered this direction. So now we're probably done with this for a while. We're going to put this to the side. We've got to start working on the pinion. Okay, the next step is going to be get this pinion installed into the case and get it, uh, get some shims in it to get it in a situation where we can start doing some testing. And they actually, as part of the instructions, it talks about uh, a checking distance and they mark it on the end of this thing. Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different markings on this item and none of them are the checking distance. Uh, I even took a picture of this and sent it to back to uh, Motive Gear and the guy, the technical support guy says, yeah, unfortunately it looks like they did not add the checking distance to the end of this pinion with all this other garbage they put on here. He said, why don't you start with, um, he gave me a nominal size for the AMC uh, rated uh, pinion and it's uh, basically 2.5 five four seven inches for checking distance now I'm gonna pop up a here's those the instructions and I'll pop up a diagram where you can see this a little better the checking distance basically is once you get it all installed it's from the center line of the ring gear which is really the same as the center line of the axles is the best way to look at that to the face of that pinion uh, it, we want it to be 2.547 and his instructions also were, and, and, you know, since we don't have that, you ought to just start with um, the thickness. Go ahead and start with the thickness of your original shim, and uh, and see where that gets you. So that's going to be our starting point. It would be to install the bearing, install the, the the this size shim. Obviously, when I took this one out, I I broke it. So um, uh, I'm going to come up with, and this is actually 100 thousandths. 0 0.100 is the thickness of this. So I'm going to get some shims. The, uh, the kit came with a with one shim, but it's not going to be enough. So I need to get another, go purchase some more shims. Um, I need to get install the bearing and get that shim on there and then get this installed uh, so that we can start doing our checking. And we can actually, I'm going to measure for this and see how close we are to that. And, and we'll just go from there. Ultimately, it's going to, we're going to do the paint test and get it, get it tuned properly. That's the first issue. The second issue is um, when I when I took apart the original, every bearing, both of these pinion bearings and both of the uh, differential bearings were both side bearings. They're all Timken bearings, which is in a very very good brand bearing. Um, and the kit that I bought came with two Timken side bearings, exactly like the carrier that we had just installed as well as the replacement for this top bearing. This is a this is the exact same bearing, same part number, Timken. But the bearing they gave me down here for the bottom is a Koyo bearing. So I'd never really heard of Koyo, so I looked it up and they're like the third largest manufacturer of bearings and they're actually, when you find them, they're expensive. Um, so it is, a, this and Timken are basically considered, I think, according to what I saw, um, really high related, related bearings. and. And so, I, but I've got a choice, and let me let me. I gotta I gotta I gotta do something here. A lot of times you'll see I've seen videos where they're doing with people are creating um, check bearings and check races, and what they're doing is they'll um, we're gonna have to take this in and out several times, and if I have to change this shim, I'm gonna have to. Well, let me let me back up. In this AMC twenty. The, um, or in any difference, you're going to have a choice. In order to shim this and allow this to go, uh, shim it in or shim it out, the shim either has to be on the back of the cup or between the bearing and the back of the pinion. And in the case of the AMC 20, they put that this is where it came out of here, and the diagram shows that's where the this, the depth shims go on the back side of this cup. So in my in our case, I need to make a setup race 
Um, and what you do there is you take this old race and you actually um, grind down this outside. You make it a little bit smaller in diameter, so it will push in uh, with just a little, just the littlest of resistance, and, and be able to push in there. We can set it up. If we got to take it out, we can get this out extremely easy, not pound on it, and then um, you know either increase or decrease our shim. So, so on this bottom end, I need a um, I'm going to need to do a setup bear, uh, setup race. And realistic on the top end because this will need to come on and off several times potentially. I need to create. I'm going to take this old bearing and I'm going to do a setup bearing. I'm actually going to make this diameter a little bit larger so this will slip on uh, to this shaft and not be a um, interference fit. So I'm going to make that a setup bearing. And I'm going to make potentially this a setup race. I've got a choice. One is. One is I go buy just a coat. I you can't mix the two manufacturers. I got I to gotta either go buy a just a Koyo race that I'll turn into a setup race. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, reduce the diameter here so it'll fit into the housing without any issue. And then this will be the bearing and race that I finally use. Or I can go buy um, the, a Timken replacement and turn this into... Um, turn this into my setup race and then just buy a, a, a complete kit uh, for this now, the the price of these are I don't know twenty thirty dollars, and the price of potentially of this just this race maybe you know ten or so. But I can't find these, um, and the, this bearing right here is like about sixty bucks or sixty seventy bucks. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just kind of scrap this guy. I can get locally. I can get uh, this the Timken piece. I'll turn this into my setup race. And I'll have then a, a brand new race and bearing that'll ultimately get pressed on here. So I can't do anything until I really get some more parts. And uh, but we're gonna do that real quick and be right back. Okay, so I got my race turned down. Um, it did take those five passes you just saw. Uh, those are very light passes. I wanted to kind of sneak up with this, and I thought by doing it lightly, I could keep it nice and round. So um, you then you definitely got to let it cool off before you try and drop it down in there, because it's going to be expanded, and you don't want it uh, to expect to contract later and drop down and be too loose. You want to keep this as tight as possible. Uh, I've marked this one with a red sharpie to kind of remind me that this is my setup bearing setup race and then um, uh, as well as this guy that turned out very easy um, it uh, it's got kind of a you know it's 
it's once you get it on there it's snug anyway so there's my my two setup pieces for that and then I've done a little um, analysis review of, of the shims that I've got I've got the shim pack that came with the master kit as well as the shim pack I bought off Amazon I think this was possibly the motive gear uh, shim pack and again I'm gonna try and just get a thickness just to get us started um, this is the original one. I, I really wish I didn't break it because I just start off with this as my initial shim. But you know, this one measures out at 0 .0993. Um, so I'm gonna call that um, point, you know, 99 thousandths is what this was. And we're gonna try and match this. And in order to do that, I went ahead and in a spreadsheet, <clears throat> I put together this little spreadsheet that helps me determine how I can get to that. Uh, 99 thousandths as well as if I need to go up some or down some what combinations um, of these shims it's pretty in interesting how you can combine them differently and get within two thousandths um, you can increment by two thousandths or decrease by two thousandths with what they gave us so it actually turned out neat so <clears throat> um, it looks like I'm going to be able to take the um, 750 which is this guy and then two of my uh, 12 thousandths and that's going to put me right at right at the 99 so we're going to get these installed and just temporarily really quick and so that I can see I want to be I want to measure that uh, checking distance see how close I can get to this 254 or it's two two point five four seven see how close we are to that and probably will if we're not too far off I probably will go ahead and set it to this and let that be my starting piece before we then put in the the differential so let's get that all installed <clears throat> the next thing I actually am going to do is um, I'm going to put the final bearing I'm going to press it onto here because once it goes on there's no reason for this to ever come off all the shimmings being done on this on behind this guy so um, actually, I think the very next thing we're going to do, we're going to get that brand new, um, the, the bearing pressed onto that. This is the new race going in permanently. check that with a feeler gauge on these shims it's just sheet metal that they've stamped it out like a punched washer and so there's there's a lip on these you can feel it in fact this one's even got a pretty big dimple so I'm gonna hit these with just an orbital sander just to knock off that edge uh, make sure these are super flat feel that so that needs a little more work these other ones and we'll be ready.
All right, we got my setup bearing that's going to be put in from the bottom. And then here's the original nut. They want you to use the original nut, not the new one. They've got some crimps on them. The new ones do. So what I did is I actually, because uh, I actually pounded on this a little bit, I actually ground this down. It took about an eighth of an inch off of it and then cleaned up the thread. So um, I got these two we're going to put in from the bottom side. And I'm going to get this just... Uh, take out all the end plays all they want the instructions are telling me to do so I'm gonna get this tightened up and then make sure that this doesn't move up and down at all just but don't put any no preload at this time okay got all the end play out of that it doesn't go up or down and the next thing I got to do is uh, all these numbers and none of them mean anything really for setup um, I got to measure the distance between this surface right here and the center line of the axles, which is the center line of the differential, which is the center line of the bearing, and this surface and this surface and the, the other two on this side, that is the best representation that I can see that we have um, <clears throat> to represent that center line, the plane that, that this creates. So um, I've seen some tools from you know $90, $125, $175 you can buy to do this. It's just, you're just checking to see how close you are, right? It's You're still going to make some adjustments. I don't see spending that kind of money. What I ended up doing, and I saw a tool that I thought, man, I could kind of make something like that. So I went and bought a piece of uh, plexiglass. It's half inch thick, eight inch by eight inch. I'm going to cut this up into two different little pieces and... Um, you know, one's going to basically expand across all this to give me that surface. So I'm going to take this surface as my my uh, center line. If I put a flat piece on here, the bottom side of that will be the, the that same plane. And then I'm going to take the other piece and mount it to the bottom and have it come off to the side. And the top surface of that second piece will be that same plane. And I can measure from that down to there. So let me get those two pieces cut up and then we'll, uh, we'll come back and see uh, how that all looks. Well, here's what we ended up with. It fits. Um, it's going to do exactly what I needed to do. The bottom side of this surface is sitting on the, the plane I want to protrude. That's the center line of the axle. As well as, and then this bottom plate, since it's sandwiched up against the bottom of that, the top surface of this is that. I've got this little slot here. I'm going to be able to measure from here down to my pinion and get that. I'm going to use uh, these caps solely as spacers, just so I can use these original bolts. And uh, we're going to get this all tightened up, and then we're going to start measuring. Okay, so I'm going to try and take three, about three measurements. I've got this triangle here just to try and help keep me square. Two point five eight six three zero okay, and two point Two point five eight four two point five eight eight. I can just look at those and know that those average out to 2.586 and what we're looking for is 2.547 so we're 39 thousandths off and what my intention will be um, we are too deep so we need to add shims we need to add roughly 40,000 shim um, 
I'll take all this apart, pull that back out, and see what I can do for adding uh, about 40 thousandths to that. And that'll get us to that checking distance that the uh, pinion guy wanted. And from that, that'll be just our starting point for for um, trying to get our, our differential in here right and get the backlash all set. So let me get that situated and then um, we'll be back. Okay, so we got to take this out. We got to add 39,000. So I've redone my spreadsheet and I'll put a copy of it up there. Um, Basically, I got I got a comment. I had to shift it way to the right uh, to add 30, 39,000. That's a lot. I, that kind of scares me a little bit. But I would say that the manufacturer of that pinion gear knows more about <clears throat> how they want that set up in this housing over, you know, what the stock was. But I thought it would have been closer to stock. Anyway, we're going to go with the 39,000 over and um, and get it all set back up. This is where. Basically, I got to just take my time. I'm going to be taking this thing apart, to and from, apart many times, and just I'll go ahead and set my expectations of doing all that. So, let me get the new shims, and we'll get this thing reassembled. Two point five four eight That's really good. Two point 
2.548. All right, so that average is 2.548. We're looking for 2.547. We're one thousandth off. That's that's perfect. We're we're right in the ballpark again. All of this work just to get to a starting point. It's going to be adjusted from there, but uh, at least this. Uh, puts us in the ballpark um, again even that 2.547 number is kind of a guess because they forgot to mark that pinion uh, so we're going to start here the pinion is now we're going to say it's in its starting position we're now going to get the differential in here but I wanted to share with you make sure you understand kind of what I'm doing I'm following a couple instructions first of all I bought this book uh, Jeep Dana Chrysler differentials and it specifically has a chapter on the AMC 20 so this is kind of giving my play-by-play -play kind of the order. And most importantly, I bought this boat, really, because I couldn't find torque specs for the AMC 20, and this has got that type of stuff in it. So, you know, I highly recommend a book like this or some kind of reference book. If you're doing this, don't just follow a video like this. Go and get some information, read up, learn about what you're doing, and make sure you're doing this stuff right. You don't want this thing to blow up and, you know, down the, going down the highway. So a uh, lot of nice sidebar diagrams and stuff in here that you can look at and explains a bunch of stuff. This is where you get your education, right? Um, what you should be getting out of this video is just kind of here, here are all the steps. And I've tried to condense this down. I think I'm at 38 minutes already and, and I've, I've chopped out all the little stuff. I've sped up video trying to make this, you know, keep it short and simple, but it's just running long. Anyway, I'm, my master plan's coming from this as well as, you know, I've got the documentation that came with the ring and pinion. I got to kind of follow what their, their guidance for their specific pieces. As well as I don't have it here with me, but it's I've got the one also for the differential. So, you know, between those three pieces of documentation is how this thing is riding. I was I was editing this last night, and a good buddy of mine, Lance Loveless, called, and I was telling him what I was doing, and I just made this kind of this cool little jig, whatever, and I was describing this piece to him, and he said, "Man, people would love to have things like that, and and uh, you got to make some." And he's he's into manufacturing. I said, "No, no, no, I'm not into that." But I will do what I normally do, and that is draw this up, like the specs for this, how all the dimensions that I came up with for the AMC 20, and I'm actually hoping to be able to use this for the front end too, the, the Dana 30 that's in the front, either this or I may have to make a new back plate for that if it's bigger or something, right? But uh, anyway, so I, I said, you know, it would be worth my while to go ahead and draw this thing up. So I've created a little document, and I'll put a bigger, better picture on the, on the piece there, but... <clears throat> um, this has got all the dimensions and some feet notes of when I when I made this thing, and and I'm gonna make it. This as a PDF, and in the description or maybe the first comment there, I'll put a link to it. It just goes to a Google Drive. You don't sign up or anything like that. It's just free, right? Just a PDF. Download it, print it out, look at it. You get all the measurements, and you could actually make one of these yourself. So super simple. This was eighteen dollars versus I think they're selling them for around a hundred. You know, plus or minus some money. So. Well, my differential side bearing shims were supposed to come in today, and I got, just got word that they've been back ordered for about three months, so I'm not going to go that route. Apparently, uh, Crown is the only company that makes the shims that go on the outside of the bearing. Uh, I called their tech support and spoke to a guy named Woody. Um, we had a great conversation, but we ended up determining you can find diagrams where they sh di uh, those shims are on the outside of those sh um, the bearing races and you can find diagrams where they're on the inside and I'm going to show that in the next part this this video is getting too long I'm going to go ahead and end it here and we'll we'll talk in more detail in part four on, on kind of what we found and what I'm doing and and uh, that type of stuff so I hope you enjoy what what we're doing here and the content and just following along and if so, I uh, hope to see you again when we get uh, part four and we'll, we'll install that True Track uh, differential. It's a True Track, uh, Eaton True Track. We'll get that installed. And uh, this is where we'll put those side bearing shims in. We'll get it all shimmed up and get it tuned and get it all set up just right. So if you'd like to follow along, please do so. Thank you, and we'll see you soon.